let's just look at the, the range of products from Isolon. Uh, as I say, out of the box, these X-series nodes uh, give you a linear scaling of performance and, uh, and capacity. But there are three product ranges. Uh, we have the S class, the S series, which is based on uh, SAS disk. Uh, it's for highly transactional IOP intensive applications. Uh, they're 5.4 terabytes per node. We've got uh, uh, 16 gigs of cache and 12 cores in this box. Uh, so obviously you start building a cluster with those and you've got massive performance, performance which far outstrips anything that most people would really need to do with this technology. Uh, a basic, uh, and I say basic with a, with a pinch of salt, but a, an X-series cluster with the two quad-core processors, four gigs of cache, two gigi uh, uh, front-end ports and InfiniBand at the back plane, that is enough performance for people like the BBC to do the right player, you know. So you, if you just got a, a virtual machine environment and you want to run your, your virtual server or virtual desktop architecture on this, it doesn't matter if you're doing what is traditionally uh, considered to be highly transactional, things like SQL, things like Exchange, unless you're massive and you're doing a lot of computational grunt work, you don't need to look at the S-Class. This X-Series product is perfectly adequate and, and you'll never stretch the performance that it gives you. Uh, and then we've got the NL series down the bottom end here, which is really the archive, deep archive product. So these nodes run to 72 terabytes in a single node, and then we can stack up to 96 of them together. So it makes the 5.3 ter uh, petabytes of, of X series look uh, small fry. You can create you know, truly you know, huge uh, file systems and archives based on the NL series. Uh, and there are bundles available. Uh, throughout this range to help you buy into the product and you're probably thinking this sounds like an expensive technology uh, and the answer to that is it can be um, but no more so than NetApp or, or IBM, HP, uh, EMC uh, and, and in fact you know, in a lot of cases if you buy into a bundle we can get you into this technology for, uh, for what I think is, is small money. Certainly when you take into account the amount of performance you're going to get, uh, the amount of bang for your buck and also, uh, very importantly, the reduced uh, operating cost. You, you can probably slash uh, the amount of uh, man effort that goes into managing your storage by a factor of five by implementing something like Isilon. Uh, so just, I mean, that's basically the hardware architecture. Uh, it's, a, it's a NAS appliance. It's also a block level SAN appliance with the iSCSI. It's clustered. It's very flexible. It's high performance. But in terms of software-based functionality, things like snapshots, uh, obviously almost a de facto standard nowadays with, with the tier one storage vendors. We want uh, uh, unlimited snapshots uh, on a file basis. So you can snapshot a directory uh, or a file. Um, and we've got um, Smart Connect, which is the load balancing. Uh, we can also carve the cluster up so that we dedicate parts of the cluster in terms of performance to particular work groups. So in the media, for example, with post-production, uh, we might carve the cluster up so that the first couple of nodes are used for ingest of data, uh, the next couple are used for, for editing, uh, and maybe the bottom, bottom two nodes in, say, a six-node cluster could be used for, for subtitling or for playout uh, or for broadcast to air. So in a, in a broadcast media environment, um, is a good example of, of how we can carve the cluster up and dedicate parts of the hardware or parts of the cluster's performance to particular work groups whilst maintaining this single logical volume of data in one place where everybody can get to it to, to collaborate on a project. Um, and then smart quotas is the uh, logical allocation of storage capacity to work groups uh, and that can be done with hard or soft uh, thresholds uh, and also it can be it can lay the foundations for thin provisioning capacity to a work group. So if you have, for example, project orientated work groups in your organization, maybe you're a manufacturer working on uh, uh, product design, uh, maybe uh, work group A uh, need uh, you know a storage uh, capacity of say ten terabytes, but um, you know initially you really only want to present a couple of terabytes to them uh, and then grow it as required. Uh, so you can make a, a quota look like a 10 terabyte storage capacity, uh, whereas actually only thin provisioning that 
to two terabytes in terms of physical storage. And then as you scale, as you get re uh, requests from the system to add more capacity to service those quotas, you can add nodes to the cluster to grow it uh, and basically what you're doing is you're giving yourself a better storage economic um, situation where you're going to be able to pay as you grow as opposed to fat provisioning and storage which isn't going to be used um, uh, if it's the immediate requirement and then we've got sync IQ which is you know, asynchronous file based uh, uh, data replication between uh, storage arrays uh, the uh, latest revision of the Sync IQ product actually also includes the automated data tiering. So uh, we can uh, automatically migrate data through tiers of isolong storage um, uh, according to how often the data is accessed, uh, how popular it is, how old it is, uh, you know, policies and metrics that you can set in the configuration uh, yourselves. And then uh, the bottom one there is Aspera. That's a, um, a secure high performance um, wide area network delivery protocol which is um, uh, it's not an isolon product actually it's, it's one of their partners it's used by a lot of the media companies to push content to uh, various different um, geographic locations over the internet but uh, so everything that you'd expect from a traditional storage array in terms of snapshotting replication thin provisioning but also things like load balancing uh, the ability to uh, provision performance to particular work groups and be very granular with the, uh, the utilization of the capacities resor uh, clusters resources overall. So whilst we're uh, giving you a very simplistic, very scalable, very flexible storage environment, we can be granular with the configuration if you need to be, uh, but the default really is that it's